Good morning or afternoon, everybody. My name is Clive Buckley from Rico Canada. I'm the product manager for our production and graphics products. I want to thank everybody attending this webinar for taking the time of your busy schedule to join us for the next 45 minutes, tops to an hour, uh, where we're going to be introducing to you a, a new technology that has been recently introduced in Canada. And it's called Rico Clickable Paper. This augmented reality print technology empowers you and your business to go beyond the traditional pin printed page. Essentially, we're going to go, uh, we're going to be going to show you how uh, to add an exponential value to any printed piece by transforming static printing material into an interactive cross media experience for your target audience. So throughout today's presentation, we will show you how to enable a cross-media campaign, also how to pro protect and reinvent your core printing business by offering your customers and your audience a new way to seamlessly switch between medias to find the information that they're looking for. And more importantly is how to create new revenue opportunity by linking the printed content, which is static, to the rich online media that is available on the web. I should make mention to you guys that uh, this presentation is recorded, it's being recorded, and will be made available for future viewing within 24 hours. We will also have a Q&A session uh, towards the end, and you will be able to post your questions through uh, your chat box that is available in the panel that you have as a attendee. So the agenda for today, uh, we're going to be going through a quick uh, technology introduction uh, for the first five, 10 minutes. And then we'll go into really the heart of this presentation, which is going beyond the printed page. With us, we've got uh, guest speakers, Dr. Harvey Levinson. He is a professor emeritus and past director of the Graphics Communication Institute at Cal Poly University in the United States. And Mr. John Parson, who is ghostwriter and marketing content writer at Intuit Ideas. So um, Harvey will be sharing with us, primarily we'll talking about what the partnership with Rico has been and how they've been able to orient us in the commercial print business as it relates to this technology. Uh, also in helping us developing a digital cur curriculum and also part of the development of clickable paper. And so how Cal Poly was, has been able to partner with Rico in this uh, endeavor. Also, he'll be focusing on some very interesting case studies which will highlight some of the key applications for clickable paper. Then John Parsons will be talking about some other really interesting applications, more specifically uh, the introdu introduction to graphics communication, which is a book that has a very interesting way of applying the technology that we're going to be talking about today and how it's been leveraged to enhance the learning experience of students that uh, have access to this book. He will also be focusing on the characteristics and advantages of clickable paper and then very important for you is the market opportunities that Rico Clickable Paper presents for your business. So what is Clickable Paper? So if you actually Googled Clickable Paper before actually joining us, you probably came across a marketing video and it gives you a high level overview of what this new service is all about, okay? But um, I do wanna just clarify, just in case, Clickable Paper is not just an app. The app itself is a component of the overall system that we'll be explaining momentarily. And it's the gateway between the printed piece and the database or the information that really makes this come to life, okay? So Rico Clickable Paper is a technology that allows you to bridge the gap between offline and online content. And it's certainly creating a link between a printed physical page or a printed piece of any kind and digital resources that are available online. What it really does, it empowers marketeers and print service providers with the ability to embed multiple virtual hotspots on a printed piece, that's virtually of course, and then take the reader from what it's considered a two-dimensional printed piece, could be a poster, could be a, a printed postcard or whatever, to a dynamic portal of information. So what's behind the scenes uh, with regards to clickable paper? So Rico 
developed a technology called Rico Visual Search Technology. And this was developed in uh, Simi Valley, uh, uh, California. Um, so it, it actually includes recognition of logarithms, data authoring, and search technologies. Okay, so the recognition itself zeroes in into what is uh, unique characteristics of a captured image. And I have an example here of a, um, of a digital uh, fingerprint. And if you think about a fingerprint recognition technology, that being for your phone or anything like that, it takes a snapshot of that digital image, if you will, and it actually takes the unique characteristics of that image, that being your fingerprint, and then associate it, associates it into a database and relates it to either images or any specific related information about that in individual. So if we were to associate this to Rico clickable paper and how it mirrors that type of technology, the same thing is true. An image is captured and then the, the software, the RVS software, takes a snapshot and the characteristics of that image itself and now posts it into a database. The database itself, then you're able to link it to rich media that once that image is captured using a the, the application on your mobile device, it goes back and queries the database and brings back the rich media to establish the relationship between a static printed piece and the, uh, the rich online media. So there is three components to Rico clickable paper. There is an authoring tool or CP creator, which is a portal, if you will, an online portal, the database itself that is on the cloud, and then the clickable paper app, okay? So the authoring tool, as I mentioned, is a uh, online portal where it's the that's where the information is being captured and uploaded into a database. There is no editing or reformatting record, uh, required. So unlike other technologies that allow you to do a little bit of cross media, if you will, like QR codes, for instance, you don't need to have any unique identifiers on that image itself. That is not a requirement with, uh, with clickable paper. The image itself and the characteristics are already being captured and held behind the scenes. The cloud server, again, is where all the data is compiled and maintained. And then it also gives access to analytics and I'll expand on that momentarily. The last piece, as you can see here, is the mobile app or the, click, the clicker app. That's available free of download, you know, through for Android or Apple devices. And I should make mention that that app itself, although yes, it's available free, depending on the customer's requirements, we can make it available as a customized app as well as or embedded into existing apps. Another huge advantage of the technology is the fact that being able to uh, manage or analyze what's being clicked, where it's being clicked, how, how often. So if we put in this into context is if you're trying to uh, understand how a piece out there that's communicating to an audience, it's being received, well, just a printed piece alone is difficult to do any analytics for that. With clickable paper and the app itself, it actually captures where uh, with an option that gives GPS location of where that it has been snapped and how often. So this is very important for anybody doing any kind of a marketing campaign or just wanting to be able to track how effective is the communication been. And more importantly, I mean, for, for the user or the subscriber for, for uh, this service, it is able to answer some of these questions. How many clicks? How many unique clicks are there? Okay, where or when it happened? And is it actually working? Okay, so that's very important. So that's a brief um, snapshot of the technology itself. So now let's get into the meat and the heart of things. So for that, I'd like to introduce Ms. Uh, Dr. Harvey Livinson, who will be focusing on really what's going beyond the printed page with Rico clickable paper. Over to you, Harvey. Hi, everybody. I'm happy to participate in this webinar. And uh, I purposely selected the picture that appears on this uh, first slide 
because I want you to know how long I've been familiar with Rico. I'm holding my first 35 millimeter camera that I acquired when I was a teenager, a Rico 500. That's how far back my relationship with Rico goes. Now, unfortunately, the, the camera still works, but I can't get film for it. And even if I did, I wouldn't know where to get it processed. So anyways, I wanted to start off with this particular slide. But let's move to the next slide, uh, Clive. OK, I'm going to talk a little bit about a, a brief history of our partnership with Rico, Cal Poly, and then into ideas. Now, uh, the first thing I want to mention is that I'm not going to be reading slides. I'm going to be talking about these slides. I have 20 minutes or up to 20 minutes for my presentation here. And I'm going to be talking around what these slides involve. Now, what's very important, I want you to understand something. My role, I do not work for RICO. I am not paid by RICO. I am not being paid to do this webinar. I am doing this for you, for our industry. What is my role? I'm an advocate of technology that helps the graphic communication industry grow and prosper. The graphic communication industry and the printing industry. Uh, that is my role. But it just so happens that RICO has a technology and not only continues as an industry leading OEM, but is now also in the communication business. Not only does RICO produce technology, but now also shows how to optimize communication with technology. And to my knowledge, there's no other OEM that's, that's doing this. So this is what clickable paper is all about. It's for the printing and publishing industry. It's for people who use print, who rely on print for information, and so on. Now, I'm going to tell you how that works. But first, a little bit about our relationship. Uh, it goes back many years, the relationship between Cal Poly and, uh, and RICO. Um, and we've been very helpful to RICO and others to understand commercial printing. Because these companies, RICO and a lot of its competitors, started off in the, in the, in the copier industry. And at some point, when inkjet became an obvious technology for our industry, and then photoelectronic printing, uh, these companies, RICO and others, uh, went in, actually got involved in the printing business. And they had to learn about commercial printing. So they came to the Graphic Communication Institute at Cal Poly. That's where we do research, testing, product evaluations, consulting, seminars, workshops, conferences, training, and we even do publishing. We have laboratories, over 33,000 square feet of laboratories with all this technology that helps the industry understand what commercial printing is all about and to learn about it and to test uh, the work that they do and so forth and so on. Um, we are a go-to group. Uh, regarding commercial printing and how to optimize it. And we've trained nearly all the big players, you know, in, including Rico. It goes back many, many, many uh, years. But besides training companies about commercial printing, there were two major initiatives that we worked on with Rico. One is what's called the Digital Literacy Curriculum, and the other is RICO's clickable paper, what this webinar is all about. And they're related because they both reflect the digital future of your in industry. So uh, first, a little bit about uh, the digital literacy curriculum. Um, I'm going to just say a few words about it, time permitting, you know, towards the end, I can say a little bit more. But there are five modules that we developed for RICO. One is designing effective digital media. The second module has to do with best practices for using type. The third module has to do with the basics of color in digital media. The fourth one has to do with databases and personalized marketing. And the last one has to do with personalized printing. There's a lot that goes on behind, uh, beneath these, th these headings, but I'm not going to get into it right now. But as far as clickable paper is concerned, 
it's related to the digital literacy curriculum because they both have to do with digital media. They maximize the benefits of print media because it has appeal to people who learn best by reading, viewing videos, listening to descriptions, uh, or by a combination of these. It turns print, uh, the applicable paper technology, turns print, ink on paper, into a multimedia experience and combine the digital literacy curriculum, uh, the RICO uh, clickable paper uh, technology elevates a major international OEM, RICO, to also be in the communication business. It shows the industry and its customers not only how to use technology, but also how to use technology to improve communications. No other company to my knowledge, is in the business of doing this. So, you know, our relationship in working with RICO and helping develop its technology and being a consultant uh, to RICO and a partner, actually, it goes back many, many years. Uh, in 2010, for example, and we have technology, we have RICO technology in our laboratories, as we have technologies from other companies. Uh, in 2010, RICO installed the C. 900s system and basically this is was to educate our students uh, who were studying graphic communication for a bachelor's, bachelor's degree on the technology of the future but also it was to conduct seminars and workshops for people in industry to understand this technology and there yeah, rico has been involved in our advisory board um, we did a multi-channel marketing paper with rico um, and, and and so on uh, in 2011, uh, we developed an expressive technologies program at Cal Poly, and uh, we received the grant to develop that. Expressive technologies has to do with technologies that emulate what the human being does, the way they express themselves in, in talking, in language, and so forth and so on. Um, and basically, clickable paper is an example of an expressive technology because it allows you to communicate not only in print and have people read, but also through videos, uh, through through sound bites and so forth and so on. And our relationship, it goes back, uh, it, it just, you know, it's been very good for many years. Uh, Rico installed the C901, they installed the C650 uh, for, for teaching and for learning. Uh, for teaching the industry, for conducting seminars and workshops, for educating our students, and so forth and so on. And in 2012, RICO came to us regarding the uh, digital literacy curriculum. And we authored it, basically. We spent a lot of time with RICO on it. And right now, as we talk, right now, it's being considered for certification by a major accreditation agency. And the idea behind that is to certify the digital literacy curriculum so it can be offered and accepted at different levels of education, primary education, in elementary schools, junior high schools, and high schools to teach students about digital technology and for implementation in secondary education at community colleges, four-year colleges and universities at technical schools and training centers, and also for industry, uh, for companies that want to do training, want to educate new employees about digital technology, for industry associations that often conduct seminars and workshops uh, for their members, uh, for certifications and so forth and so on. So the intent here is to take the digital literacy curriculum offer it to educational institutions on all levels to make it a very important component of education. Because in the 21st century, digital education begins when formal education begins in elementary school, and it continues from there into industry. And the clickable paper technology is an important element of this because it provides communication, interactive communication in a number of ways. 
some people learn best by reading some people learn best by viewing videos some people learn best by listening you know sound and so forth and so on and some people learn best by a combination quick clickable paper technology offers all of these options starting with ink on paper starting with print so our relationship goes back uh, quite a few many years and most recently um i'll now bring into ideas and john parsons in into the equation in about in the 2017 um i had the idea of updating my first book introduction to graphic communication that uh, was published in 2007 by printing industries of america very popular book but technology in our industry changes very very rapidly and I've been getting requests over the years to, to upgrade the book. I had to upgrade it for schools, for, for companies were using it for training and education and so forth. But I didn't have the time. I was running a department at Cal Poly. It was very busy. I was doing other things. Uh, and then one day I got a communication from John Parson, who's the principal of Into Ideas, and a very well-known uh, editor and writer uh, in our in our industry. And uh, he uh, was the executive editor for Seabold, and he would, then went on his own and asked me if I had any projects that he can assist with. And the thought occurred to me that this might be a great way to, to update uh, the book, Introduction to Graphic Communications, um, into its second edition. To make a long story short, we conferred, we decided to partner on this, but we didn't want it to be any book. We wanted it to be different. And was trying to think of ways of how to make this stand out and my thinking went back to the work i did with rico in developing the the uh, clickable paper technology and i thought hey why not use clickable paper to turn a printed book into a interactive multimedia book and that's what we did it was the first book ever to use clickable paper and to make a long story short, it has now become the go-to book in our, in our industry for education and industry training. So let's go to the next slide, Clyde. Okay, so the book came out, it's become very popular. Um, I'll talk a little bit about schools that have adopted it and businesses that have adopted it in a little while. But as a result of the book, I thought that it might be a good idea to do a few case studies on what clickable paper is all about and how even though my book or John and my book, we are now co-authors, um, is about graphic communication and printing, clickable paper technology applies to any industry, any field, any field can benefit from it. So I decided to do a few case studies to kind of show the world the opportunity that they have. And I started off the first case study to describe how RICO has moved from an OEM into a communication company. They continue being a leading OEM, but they're now in the communication business as well. And uh, that was the first case study. But I thought, let me be more specific and show how different industries have benefited or can benefit from this technology. So I thought two major industries would be, one would be healthcare, okay? And we did a study, a, a case study on how Rico's clickable paper can help residents and staff of long-term care facilities teach them how to train. It can teach them how to deal with difficult situations with the elderly in long-term care facilities. It could show videos and sound bites and text about knowing legal rights of long-term care residents and their families, knowing how the law is changing, and then overall communications on administrative policies. So basically, we took three publications, converted them into applicable paper publications and the recipients of these publications 
families of health of people in long-term care facilities, residents, staff of long-term care facilities can now access information from printed material, not only by reading, but by viewing videos, websites, hearing sound and so forth and so on. And then we did the same thing with another big industry, the music industry. And we did a case study on how Rico's clickable paper can help spread Japanese culture worldwide through music. And we used uh, the Japanese shakuhachi flute experience to demonstrate how an entire industry, the music industry, can benefit from clickable paper technology. Um, how to teach music, how to show how instruments are made, how to educate about the culture of music, and how to focus on, and, and, and this case study kind of uh, had a focus on classical Japanese music and is a tribute to Rico's Japanese culture and heritage. And I want to tell you, all of you in this program, in this webinar, will be receiving a full copy of each of these case studies at some point after the webinar. Um, they're almost all done. They'll all be done by the end of the month. They're going to be presented at, uh, at Printing United in October, at the end of October in Dallas, Texas. And they are really key documents on demonstrating the value of this particular technology. Um, Okay, Clyde, let's go to the next slide. So to give you a little bit of background on uh, uh, the adoption of, of a book and the technology, um, to start off with, you may know industry guru Frank Romano. In an issue of what they think in the video, Frank said, that this is now the go-to book for educating and training in the field. Pat McGraw of Print Sample TV said that augmented reality can now tell additional stories as opposed to what is printed in the book. She said it extends print into other ways of communicating. So as you can see on this slide, the book has been adopted by some major schools, Ann Arundel County Public Schools, Arizona State University, Bowling Green University, Keefe Regional Technical School, uh, Metamora Township High School, Ryerson University, University of Houston, and, and so on. So it's been adopted by not only primary education, but secondary education as well. And also, it's been adopted by a consortium of colleges and universities in China where the book is being translated. Uh, Beijing, Institute, Beijing Institute of Graphic Communication, Shanghai Publishing and Printing College, Shazan Polytechnic, University of Shanghai in Science Technology, uh, now all have uh, adopted this book. And presently, there are six or seven other major universities considering it. And the book has also been adopted by the California Public Printing Office for training. And there are a number of corporations and industry associations also considering uh, the book. And it's received an award that's going to be presented at, uh, at Print 19 in Chicago just in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, it received the Certificate of Merit in the textbook category in Printing Industries of America, it's PIA 2019 Premier Print Awards Competition. So let me close by showing the next slide, and I think this is appropriate. Ryerson University has the premier graphic communication program in all of uh, Canada. In fact, quite frankly, it's one of the premier, has one of the premier graphic communication programs in the world. And uh, it has adopted uh, the book. And uh, Diane Verma, a professor in the program, said that the book pairs really well with our first year curriculum for graphic communications management students. It has a lot of excellent up-to-date information about the printing industry, 
that no other intro textbook on the market has right now. So let me close by saying this. Most of us would agree that printing is considered, print is considered the most informative, pervasive, meaningful, and detailed form of communication that has ever existed since the time of Gutenberg when Gutenberg developed movable type in 1456. However, today I think we'll all agree that if you surveyed people, particularly younger people in newer generations, about how they like to receive information, what they prefer, a lot of them would say, well, we like multimedia, we like videos, we like sound bites, and so forth and so on. But they would probably all agree that reading a book and seeing a movie about the book, the, the printed version is more pervasive, has more detail and more meaningful. And this is true with news stories, newspapers versus news clips on television, uh, news stories on radio versus printed stories in newspapers and magazines. I think we'll all agree that the printed version, more detailed, more meaningful. Clickable paper provides the opportunity for all of these forms of communication in one medium. So I'll conclude with that. And John, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Harvey. Wow, you've just taken some of my thunder with, with your enthusiasm for the book. Uh, so this is going to be a little shorter than I had planned. Uh, next slide, please, Clive. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our experience in writing the book. Harvey's already told you a lot of the background. But when we undertook to do the book, um, we had the thought what it, would, what it would be like for a school to have a guest lecturer from the industry, some from another school or from uh, some uh, an industry expert like Frank Romano or David Zwang, and have them actually come in and lecture. Well, most colleges can't afford any of that. They can't afford to bring somebody in, and these people are incredibly busy. So we thought originally of the idea of having a guest lecture model of bringing those people into the book. My original idea was to use QR codes, uh, but Harvey, as you've just heard, has a is, is a very enthusiastic supporter of clickable paper. Um, I had written about it when I was an editor at Seabold. I was familiar with it. Uh, but he had a lot of connections at RICO and was able to get an arrangement going. So RICO co-sponsored the book and uh, provided the clickable paper interface for our multimedia experience. Next slide, please. So Harvey intimated some of this about the difference between print and digital. It's not a zero-sum game. People say that print is dying or dead and and digital is, is rising. There's no real reason to say that because print has an enduring experience that is not going to go away. Digital has a different experience, but the two are not mutually exclusive. Neither medium really replaces the other. And uh, as part of the book, we added a video by Dr. David Eagleman uh, talking about the difference between the two. Uh, Clive, could you play that video for us? Since the early 90s, there have been more than 100 published studies on people reading on paper versus on a screen. And it turns out that overall what they show is that people prefer reading on paper. And that's because things are more intuitively navigable and you can make a better mental map of where things are. And it's just cognitively easier on you than reading on a screen. And so people tend to enjoy the experience better and they remember more. A recent study in Norway had high schoolers read texts, either on paper or online, and they measured comprehension, and comprehension was much better when you were reading on paper. When you consider memory, paper looks even better, and that's because when we read online, we tend to go about it a different way where we're hunting and browsing and scanning for things. But on paper, your attention is directed in a different way, and so we have a longer-term memory for what we've read. So while digital devices are great for certain kinds of communication, like sending tweets or getting directions, it turns out that even digital natives have a better experience on paper in terms of comprehending what they're reading and remembering it better. Okay. 
And next slide, please. So the, the bottom line for that narrative, which we kind of all get because we're in the print space, is that both sides, digital and print, have intrinsic value. It's like a river with two different banks. They're both valuable. Next slide, please. The question is, first question is how to bridge the two media. Next slide, please. So QR codes uh, and other, uh, other uh, artifact-based indicators on print are, are often, almost always, single uh, connections, what point to point. They point to a single online event, uh, a URL usually, or it could be an email address. Uh, it could be any. It could be a, a whole series of things. In the case of QR, but one thing they share is that it requires a unique printed artifact. You have to actually print something on the piece on the piece of paper. Whereas with clickable paper, you can have multiple multiple events. It's like a transit station, not just a single bridge. And you can use it with any printed piece, old or new. If you if you could get permission to have a PDF of the Gutenberg Bible in Mainz and digitize it, which they probably wouldn't let you, um, you could actually use that, and somebody in the vault in the in the Gutenberg Museum could scan it and have a multimedia experience. Also, with clickable, you can change the the you can change what happens when you scan. You don't have you're not limited to a single event. If you wanted to add something, you could. Next slide, please. So here's what we did with the book. We used Clickable Paper's image recognition technology, and in the in the Creator app, you have the ability to draw a zone. You, you upload a PDF of the printed piece, which we did. We drew a zone over a certain area. If there's an area that was already registered, a common something that was already part of the Clickable Paper universe, we can mask that out. And for each zone, we can designate multiple actions. So in our case, we had videos that are hosted on a, on a secure learning portal, uh, external websites. We could have a, a LinkedIn discussion. Um, we have You could email the authors. So on any number of, not any number, a large number of actions can be designated for each zone. Next, please. But the real question is, when do you build that bridge? You, not that you, you can do it, but is there a reason to build it? And I'd like to talk briefly about that because it's really important. We don't want to go down the road that many people went down with QR codes and do this in a way that's not going to succeed. The way to summarize it best is both the print and the digital side have to have intrinsic value. And the connection that you create with this bridge via clickable paper has to enhance both media. And sometimes the answer is you don't need to do it. There's no necessity of doing it. And I'll explain why. Next, please. OK, uh, with the two sides of the equation, print needs to have what I call a sufficiently long half-life. What do I mean by that? If you have a piece of print collateral that comes in your mailbox, you have to ask the question, what happens once a, a user receives that? They may read it or they may not. It may go on a shelf, it may go in their desk, it may go in a filing cabinet or a binder, or it may go straight to recycling. It doesn't have a very long shelf life, but things like books and signs have longer shelf, have a longer half-life. They're around longer, people experience them on a, on a, on a more continuing basis. They, they're more likely to pick them up more than once and look at them. The digital side has to have a mobile experience that makes sense. So when you actually cross that bridge, the thing that you experience has to make sense on the device you're using. If, if, if people use it for travel, having a map application on their phone makes total sense. Reading a homepage of someone's video, of someone's uh, website, not necessarily as much. Next, please. So here's a scale that I set up for how do you determine when to build the bridge. You'll notice there's several, in, several examples of printed products. I put textbooks at the top because that's what I do, but also other kinds of books are around longer. They have more a longer half-life. On the bottom end would be things like marketing and event collateral. As valuable as that is, these things aren't going to hang around as often, so there'll be less opportunity, less reason to reach for your phone and scan them. On the other side of clickable paper, there's the mobile consequence. When you scan, what are the actions or events that make most sense on that device? Let me give you one example. Next, please. So here you have a travel guide. 
travel guides tend to be around for a while. You don't you don't ditch them immediately. They could be around for several years, um, depending on the quality of the guide. But the mobile experience that's that pairs well with this is finding a location while you're traveling. If you're in the mountains and you love you love where you're going, but you don't have a good idea of where a good camping spot is or a good hotel. And so scanning a travel guide that's clickable, paper enabled would open up a targeted a targeted uh, Google Maps or Apple Maps um, location that would say, here are the five nearest campsites. So it makes sense on the mobile device because that's what you do. And it also has a long half-life. The, the, the document's likely to stick around longer than a, than a marketing piece or a magazine article. Next, please. So what are the problems? As anybody can, can remember, when QR codes became fashionable about 10 years ago, uh, there was the problem of people's resistance to downloading an app. Until very recently, you had to download a separate app and there were hundreds of apps that could read QR codes and resolve them into websites. People just didn't want to do that. They still don't. Uh, more, more recently, Apple has bundled it into their native OS. You can read QR codes now, but it took 20 years and most Android phones can do it, but it's still, it, it, people still don't like downloading apps. Also, if you, if you remember from QR code campaigns, a lot of people did them without a clear strategy for the mobile experience. What was the actual experience once you scanned that code? Or in our, in our case, scanning a clickable paper enabled page. If it's just a home page on someone's website or a random YouTube video, it's probably not gonna get as the success you want. People assume that if they just created the stuff and made the stuff scannable, the people would just automatically reach for their phones and they tend not to. They also created incentives the good campaigns created incentives, but there was no follow through. There was no immediate action on the mobile side that was trackable, that was meaningful for a, for a sales funnel or for anything. Next, please. So the business opportunities in general, I believe are, are founded on several principles. One is called the directed sale. What do I mean by that? A directed sale, when you're selling the idea of a printed piece with a digital component, is that there has to be, in your audience, there has to be an inherent incentive to use the technology. So for example, in our book, many of the professors who have adopted the book require the students to watch some, some videos, certain videos, uh, in order to pass the test. There'll be quiz questions based on stuff that was in the videos. Uh, there's other examples of healthcare uh, what, that Harvey referred to. There's an incentive to learning more than, than is actually in the book. So you're incented to download the collectible paper app and use it. Uh, in the case of, uh, of the Japanese music book, people want to hear what that music sounds like. The incentive inherently is that they want to hear that as well as see how, how the flutes are made. So the, the, you're directing that sale to someone who, who would logically be motivated to download the app and use it. The, uh, the print comp 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 the best potential for selling this is probably customers who already have some kind of a digital presence. Building it from scratch is hard. Also, if they have an existing mobile app, a shopping app, for example, uh, they have already have a base of people using, using their technology to which clickable paper can be added. In the case of commerce, you've got the potential also of what I call an easy button for buying things. If you could scan a catalog and instantly buy the thing that you're looking at, it would have more incentive because people do enjoy having a printed catalog. The half-life of a nicely produced catalog is probably several weeks to, to up, to, up to a month or so. And so it sits around and people enjoy the, the haptic experience of opening a catalog and browsing through it more than they would for on a website. So having the ability to easily reach for their phone and buy the thing that they're enjoying watching enjoying looking at would be another example of a direct sale. The other, the other opportunity for print service providers is to create a branded app. If you have a, a set of customers that would benefit from this technology, creating a clickable paper app that is yours and yours alone would give, would give a better sense of identity with, between the customer and you. It would match your focus and give them value that was consistent. The last thing I'm gonna mention is partnerships. 
you literally cannot do this on your own. You need to have someone who is developing a suitable presence. Maybe it already exists, it just needs to be connected, but very few print service companies have all the things required to do all the pieces of this. Building these bridges is a team effort. Last slide, please. And of course, like anything, we need to plan. We need to have a good sense of what our objectives are, what the audience is likely to do with an app or not do with an app, what the, what the half-life of the printed component is, so that when we sell something, we're not just slapping on a QR code, the equivalent of slapping on a QR code, which we found from history doesn't work. Clickable paper is an amazing technology, but it needs to be applied in a way that, that it reflects our planning. And that's all for me. Thank you, John. Thank you, Harvey. Really appreciate it. Um, so essentially the value proposition that Clickable Paper has to offer is the fact that it uses technology to bridge the gap between two mediums, as John was uh, alluding to with the, the bridge analogy. Okay, And the, the key piece is that the original artwork does not need to be altered. So there's no specific design to be done. You don't have to design for clickable paper. It's just the uniqueness of the piece itself and the fact that it's being uh, related to with online media, okay? And it doesn't have to be of a particular printed technology either. It could be ink, toner, no matter what you, th you, you can print on, offset, it can still be uh, leveraged for this. So with that, we wanted to uh, share what this technology is all about, how you can leverage it for your business to certainly take print to that next level. We wanna open it up for questions right now. Um, you have a little chat box or a question box that is available to you. You can post questions there and we can certainly address them um, as they come along. Again, a reminder for everybody that the recording of this presentation will be made available to you 24 hours through an email communication. We want to thank you for your time and we want to open up for any questions. Okay, um, one of the questions that comes to mind uh, at this point is, do I need a graphics design background? to use the CP creator or the authoring tool. This is the web portal. And the answer is no. As long as you can click and drag and associate to a specific uh, location or URLs, there is no real graphics design background. And then the other thing that, another question that comes to mind here is, how does the clickable paper annual subscription work? This is based on number of concurrent images. 50, 100, 150, and when I say concurrent, is that as long as you wanna keep the images uploaded and available as a campaign, if you will, that are clickable, then that takes a spot of an image. Other than that, you can replace the image or you can update the media that is related to on that image without having to change the printed piece. Clive, there's one other thing that came when we were doing this, uh, one question that came to mind is someone asked if it had to be a photograph or an illustration that we that we keyed this to. And I discovered that the image recognition technology applies all the way to a piece of text. So if you had a piece of text on the page that was unique and you targeted that as your zone, it would recognize, it's so detailed, it recognizes that text. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't OCR interpret the text, but it recognizes it as a unique shape. So you don't have to have uh, you, you, you can you can have a, a custom icon that represents an idea. You can do whatever you, whatever your designers want to do, but it can be as simple as just the configuration of words on a page. As long as it's unique, clickable paper will recognize it and take you to the associated events. Thanks for bringing that up. I'd like to add something to the discussion while we uh, wait for questions. There may not be any more, but. Uh, I want to mention that of the three case studies, two of them, the one that we did for the uh, healthcare industry and the music industry, uh, we sent out uh, questionnaires. Uh, there were 10 objective questions plus an opportunity for comments to leading people uh, in these fields. 
and uh, the response to the simplicity was uh, of, of implementing clickable paper was absolutely incredible. There were four categories from the highest rank to the lowest rank. And in both cases, over 97% of the responses came in favorable in the top two categories, not only for implementing the technology, but for the effectiveness of the technology as a communication medium. And all of you, you're gonna get these reports, you're gonna get these case studies, and you will see uh, the results that we received. They were absolutely incredible. So I see that there's no questions that were being brought up. Um, again, there is more information that can be made available. We have the uh, the URL link that you have if you require additional information about clickable paper. We want to thank you for your time today and have a great day.